HVACR, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration. It's a two plus two program, so there's two years of an associate level and then another two years that has a tendency towards more engineering aspect of our field. Uh, we're making the assumption that they have not done any of these things because we're working with a lot of electricity, a lot of high voltage. A large part of our infrastructure that's around us um, is heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration. So adding heat, removing heat, uh, air conditioning buildings, making sure there's proper ventilation. For every three hours of lecture, there's six hours of lab. And that's for all but one of the classes that has three hours of lab. There's a lot of base knowledge that has to be given to the students, so they really have to be sound fundamentally in refrigeration, electrical, combustion analysis, things like that. We do a lot of like soldering and brazing stuff. We have been building coolers, and we're about to start building a freezer uh, unit too, and 101, cool stuff. We pride ourselves on having a wide variety of equipment, you know, chillers, boilers, things like that that the students can work on and be exposed to, but we also recognize that we can't show them everything. But if they're sound in those fundamental things, then they can go out and they can, they can troubleshoot, they can reason through any sort of HVACR related problem. We use these, the techniques that we learn and the theories we learn along with physically working on pieces of equipment. A 100 level class where you're learning to read prints, so if you have to shut power off to a room, you know, now you're looking at a print and, and they're going out in the building and they can see these things. We had some good um, lab work that we did hands-on, so I never had that exposure before where I could get to play around with all sorts of equipment and systems. Most of the professors have really good industry experience, so they have a lot of real-life situations that they explain us, and that really helps to get knowledge about what it is like in the field. One of the things is some students get nervous about that. Maybe you don't have a lot of hands-on experience. But when I started this program, I literally knew nothing about nothing, and I learned everything here at Ferris. And so if you, if you haven't had trade school, if you're not working with an uncle or a, or, a, or a relative in the field, don't get nervous because we start at the beginning. And that's what all that lab time is for, is to kind of exercise those things and get good at it. As students do things and work on pieces of equipment, they start to gain a lot of confidence. and even. After, say, after their freshman year, they go out and maybe work with somebody in the field, they just gain a, a tremendous amount of confidence. Right now, we have a lot of projects that are, that are going on in the bachelor level of the program, and I really enjoy participating in these projects. The capstone class, the way it's set up, is the students get a raw set of architectural plans. So they know what the building is, they know where the space is, they know the function of the building. And then they have to take that building and go through a design process or procedure for the HVAC field. It's a design competition where you have to do a system selection for a medical building in Hungary, Budapest. Don't be nervous if you don't have a lot of experience. Um, the experiences that you're going to have are real world experiences. So right now it's really demand driven for our graduates and they're mostly going to work for control companies like Johnson Control, Siemens, Honeywell, those type of jobs. So the starting salaries are up in the low 60s. There's a lot of areas again for employment you're, you're going to be employed if you if you develop your skills. There's more need than there are graduates.